When a space company is mentioned nowadays, many of us just think about one name, and that's SpaceX. They were just a space startup two decades ago, struggling to survive on the brink of bankruptcy. But today, they're breaking world records one after another. And recently, SpaceX achieved one of the greatest milestones in space history, something that proves how far they've come and how far ahead they are of everyone else. In this video, we're going to dive deep into SpaceX's 500th Falcon 9 launch and their new reusability record, how it all started, why it matters, and why other space companies are still struggling to keep up. Make sure to hit that subscribe button before we start. Reusing a rocket today might seem like the most normal thing in the space world. You watch a launch, see the booster come back, and land gracefully on a drone ship. It looks routine, even boring sometimes, but just two decades ago, that was pure science fiction. For most of space history, rockets were treated like disposable lighters. You use them once, and then they're gone forever. Whether it was NASA's Saturn V in the Apollo era, Europe's Ariane rockets, or Russia's Soyuz launchers, they were all single use. Even the space shuttle, which many people think of as reusable, wasn't truly economical. Every shuttle mission required massive refurbishment, endless manpower, and billions of dollars in upkeep. It was an engineering marvel, but not a sustainable one. So when Musk and SpaceX came along in the early 2000s, the industry laughed. Traditional aerospace companies thought it was impossible, or at least not practical. Fast forward to today and SpaceX has made reusability the new normal. Back in 2008, SpaceX was on its knees. They had tried three times to launch their first rocket, the Falcon 1, and all three attempts failed. The company was running out of money, and Musk had already poured much of his personal fortune into the dream. It was their fourth attempt, Falcon 1 Flight Number 4, that finally reached orbit. That single success saved the company and secured a NASA contract. Without that flight, there would be no Falcon 9, no Crew Dragon, and certainly no Starship today. When the Falcon 9 first launched in 2010, it was still a traditional expendable rocket. But behind the scenes, SpaceX engineers were already testing new ideas. They started with parachutes, trying to recover boosters from the ocean. That didn't work. Next, they tested controlled descents, learning how to fire engines in mid-air to slow down the rocket. By 2015, they made history. A Falcon 9 booster launched a payload to orbit, came back through the atmosphere, and landed upright on solid ground at Cape Canaveral. For the first time in history, an orbital-class rocket had been recovered intact and ready to fly again. From that point on, the Falcon 9 entered a new era. Over the years, SpaceX refined the process, making the landings more reliable, the turnarounds quicker, and the refurbishments cheaper. They built drone ships with names like Of Course I Still Love You and a shortfall of gravitas to catch boosters at sea. Each successful landing meant more data, more confidence, and more cost savings. Today, Falcon 9 is not just a rocket, it's a workhorse. It launches satellites, astronauts, cargo for NASA, military payloads, and even private missions. And it does so with a consistency the world has never seen before. Fast forward to today, and SpaceX has just achieved something no one imagined them doing. They just completed the 500th launch of the Falcon 9 rocket. Let that sink in. 500 flights of the same rocket family. That's not just a record. It's a revolution in how humanity approaches space. Think about it this way. NASA's space shuttle program, which was hailed as groundbreaking in its time, flew 135 missions across 30 years. The mighty Saturn Fomp, the rocket that took humans to the moon, launched only 13 times before being retired. Yet here's SpaceX, a company that many once dismissed as a risky startup, racking up 500 flights in just 15 years. But this milestone isn't only about the sheer number of launches. It's about how those launches were done, and more importantly, how much money they saved. When rockets were single-use, every launch was like throwing away an entire airplane after one flight. Imagine buying a brand new 747, flying it from New York to London, and then scrapping it on arrival. That's how space worked for decades. 
before reusability, the average cost of launching payloads to orbit was hundreds of millions of dollars. The space shuttle, often praised for reusability, ended up costing around $1.5 billion per flight when you factored in all the refurbishment, manpower, and infrastructure needed. Now enter Falcon 9. A brand new Falcon 9 launch costs roughly $67 million. But here's the magic. When SpaceX reuses a booster, the cost drops dramatically. Musk himself has said that the fuel cost for a Falcon 9 launch is only about $300,000 to $500,000. The most expensive parts are the engines, avionics, and structures. All things that, thanks to reusability, don't have to be rebuilt from scratch every time. By flying a booster 20, 25, and now even 30 times, SpaceX is spreading the cost of that hardware across dozens of missions. Industry analysts estimate that reuse can cut launch costs by 30% to 50% per flight. Now multiply that across 500 launches. Even on the conservative end, if SpaceX saves just $20 million per reused launch, that's roughly $10 billion saved over the Falcon 9's lifetime so far. And that's not counting the time saved, the confidence gained, and the sheer operational experience that comes with flying so often. While SpaceX is landing boosters on drone ships, NASA is still spending billions developing the Space Launch System, or SLS. SLS is NASA's flagship rocket, designed to take astronauts back to the moon as part of the Artemis program. But here's the problem. SLS is not reusable at all. Each launch costs an estimated $4.1 billion. That's right, $4.1 billion per flight. To put that in perspective, for the price of one SLS launch, you could buy around 60 Falcon 9 launches, or you could fund multiple years of Starship testing. And the kicker? Every time an SLS launches, its engines and boosters are thrown away, sinking into the ocean as expensive scrap metal. It's like NASA is still driving a gas-guzzling car from the 1970s while SpaceX is running a fleet of Teslas that recharge and drive again. The problem is that NASA doesn't need to innovate to survive. They're funded by taxpayers, not by revenue, so even if they don't improve, they'll still get billions every year. That's why they can stick with single-use rockets like SLS, while SpaceX is forced to push reusability to stay alive. And it's not just NASA. United Launch Alliance has its Vulcan rocket, but true reusability is still years away. Blue Origin has been talking about its new Glenn rocket for almost a decade, but it hasn't flown yet. All of these companies are still struggling to do what SpaceX has been doing routinely for years. The reason isn't a lack of money or talent. It's because building a reusable rocket is incredibly difficult. When a booster re-enters the atmosphere, it faces extreme stress and heat, thousands of degrees Celsius tearing at its structure. Then there's the precision required to land it. We're talking about a 40-meter-tall rocket moving at supersonic speeds that has to flip around and land upright on a floating platform in the middle of the ocean. It's like tossing a pencil off the top of a skyscraper, lighting it on fire, and then having it balance perfectly on its tip when it lands. And even if you can recover the rocket, you need to make refurbishing it quick and cheap, otherwise the whole point of reuse is lost. That's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this, and stay tuned for the next one.